know when I was training, I would have only evening times. I'm the kind of person that never had extra time to train yeah. past high school. So every time I was on court, I would give a hundred. Whether my teammates were slacking down or not, when court said sprint, I would sprint like my life depended on it because yeah. it's either now or now. Believe in your skill and your potential to be a good player because I know there were times when I didn't think I could do it and I wanted to give up but then my dad you know, he was there, he pushed me, he would wake me up for training in the morning when the last day before I had, you know, things, shots were dropping. You know, you just need to have, and you need to have that self-drive, but you also need to have support. So look, seek for support from your parents. Don't, don't be shy to bring up the idea of, you know, can I go for training today? Or maybe can I get a basketball and be dribbling? Because you need to be able to not make excuses for yourself. That's a, a thing that a lot of people subconsciously do. You'll have, you'll have a starting point, you know. And also to, you know, just, if you love something, give it your all. Mm -hmm. Because I know there was a time when I played basketball, but I didn't, I didn't love it, so I just... I was just, you know, going with the flow. First and foremost, uh, thank you very much for hosting me. I'm yeah. really, really humbled and uh, I'm blessed to be here. Yeah, yeah surely. Uh, I'm talking about basketball. Personally, my journey of basketball started from far, very, very far. That was in high school. And uh, in a situation whereby we did not have uh, enough exposure, we didn't have coaches, we didn't have the facilities like we do have them right now. Yeah. Although I'm saying this like there are so many years ago, there are not so many. <laughs> <laughs> that was about, um, two th I began knowing basketball in 2007. That was at KPC when I was in P7 vacation. Yeah. Uh, that is end of 2007 actually, yeah. that's KPC North. Yeah. That's when I first touched the basketball. <laughs> so in one way or another they identified my talent they realized i could at least throw in the ball yeah yeah at, at any sport they would just give it to me although i was weak i didn't know how to bounce they only told me one thing throw in the ball yeah. and throwing in the ball gave me an opportunity to play with them yeah. when i was in senior one senior two but still of course i still had people who didn't believe in me and it was challenging <laughs> If you look at City Oilers, um, I mean, we've, we've been, you know, champions for the last, you know, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you that uh, it's, it's because of uh, you know, the players that we have mm -hmm. uh, on the team. And I would say that we, uh, we have, you know, uh, some of the best players mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 the, in, in the Ugandan League, you know, uh, mm -hmm. on the City Oil. So as a coach, uh, you, you want to pick your best players in the country. Uh, to play and uh, it, I, I, will, I will not say it is unfortunate <laughs> that they all come from City Oil uh, but you know a lot of uh, those players you know uh, are City Oilers um, and uh, I, I, I really you know don't want to see it that uh, because uh, I'm a City Oilers coach <laughs> and management is City oh, Oilers <laughs> uh, it's just purely on uh, 
so uh, in, statistics. In, in, support, and in, in summary, you're saying it's <laughs> based on merit. Uh, it's definitely based on merit. Welcome to the Slam Dunk Basketball Talk on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel Lateng. It's a lovely Saturday, another day to talk basketball. And today in the house, we have two surprise guests. We've always had guys in the house, but we're going to change it up just a little bit. But remember, we are live on YouTube at House of Talent Livestream Uganda, or you can catch us HTV1 on our Twitter. And to begin the show today, I have two ladies in the house, beautiful ladies. For the guys who are out there watching i know that guys have been waiting for this to happen uh ladies you're welcome to the show thank you esther and brony and surprise surprise one of them was actually almost miss uganda but we'll get into that a little bit later ladies you're welcome to the show thank um, you we've had a lot of guys on the show and it's 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 a rare thing to have ladies come through yeah so i believe the guys out there have tuned in you know so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have to live up to the hype today you know for the show um just to start off tell us about yourselves okay we'll start with you morning i know you but the guys out there who want to know you more so just tell us more about you um, my name is Kusima Brony Divine. Yeah. Um, H, let me keep that. <laughs> <laughs> I am at Macquarie University pursuing a bachelor's degree in nursing. Yeah. And I'm in my year two. Basically, that's mainly it, other than the basketball and the modeling bit yeah. and family. Yeah. So, for how long have you been in year two? Because this, we have to be sure this COVID oh. thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am supposed to be a proud year three clinical student, but here I am. Still year two. second year. Yes. Interesting. Good to know. You. Um, Esther. Um, Esther Mirembe. Yeah, I'm in second year as well. Mm -hmm. Pursuing a bachelor's degree in industrial and organizational psychology, we did train because we came earlier, had a small camp since we were home for the whole COVID thing and we were all chilling, we were off uh, when it comes to, like, we were really off. Yeah. So yeah, we had training, we had a camp, we all came, all of us the five, we actually, we had a team selected. so. They kept on choosing and choosing until the final four okay. players that were to represent Macquarie University. And um, yeah, it was um, to, to the, the whole thing of um, the traveling and all that. The university made it easy for us. They facilitated everything, actually. Yeah, yeah we recommend them for that. It was a good drive, even the boys' team. They also had the same experience. We had different coaches coming down to help us, uh, care of us, the first they do, and learn a bit from each and every one of yeah. them. And yeah. our coaches and the support system, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's exciting to know that Makere took care of you because you've had complaints <laughs> about Mook not actually taking care of its players. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I mean, if they, they took did. care of you guys this time. I don't complain. <laughs> <Sure, they did. laughs> well, that's a good thing then. Um, Esther, going, going for the games, uh, we yeah. had teams that represented Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, there was you guys, of course, Magari University. Mm -hmm. There was the UCU. Yes. We had Ndeja coming through. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a particular style of basketball we play in Uganda, mm -hmm. which I believe is kind of different from the basketball that is played by the Kenyans or the Zambians or the Senegalese. Okay, okay. what are some of those things that you learned from the other teams going for? Coaches gave us, even us, the ones that we tried to use, yeah. we uh, realized a few of those that they were using, tried to play it out. Like they, because of the quick reaction, it gives you brain, uh, sorry, it gives you uh, game reading. So you, your game reading gets faster because now you know they get the ball and it is straight to the shooter and it's a two made already. Yeah. So you have to get your your head into that game. You have to be on your toes all the time because for that anything is happening at that time. Yeah. No time to doze or think or anything. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we realized because okay. we kept on after every game we kept on like sitting and talking and feeling like, Okay, what are we doing for this game? You've seen what has happened in the previous game. Yeah. This and this and this happened. Even you see the moment you're on like it's business from second one to the last second so i guess given that most of us had not played three on three at lot yeah. it was it, w it was taking time for us to adjust at the beginning we had one person that's going to drive 
<laughs> one person that's going to post and one person that's going to shoot. Yeah. So it was um it was tricky. We had to fight for every basket. It yeah. wasn't easy that I'm going to just shoot and that's it. Yeah. We had to fight for every basket. Uh, we were not taking time to play as a team. We were rushing things. Yeah. You know, even when we're in the lead, the teams uh, were supposed to beat. For example, uh, we lost one game, mm-hmm. which was Kenyatta. such a tough loss. Kenyatta. Yes, it was 3-2. Yeah. Such a painful <laughs> game. We we wanted to die. Yeah. So that game made us... We beat everyone apart from Kenyatta, 3-2. And then we, we they had to use uh, numbers to table us. Yeah. And uh, Randa had beat Stellenbosch by a very big range. It was 18 yeah, 3. Yeah. Then, us, we were lazy in that game because it was a sure win. <laughs> so, there were very little and uh, small ranges. So, it turns out that we, didn't, we, we ended up being second, yeah. which made tempo. us play you. Be consistent on everything from the very beginning to the last. So, that in, you like. The whole time that you gave in, in the very beginning, does not all go to waste. Yeah. Because uh, when I start, when I leaned back the last week and I used not to go for the morning shooting and all that, um, it reached in the games and I, the shots were off. Like it would <laughs> hit the hoop and then come back to you. It reached a point and my, my, uh, my teammates are telling me, don't shoot. Okay, come inside. <laughs> okay, do this. Okay, just drive. Don't shoot. Yeah. Like, it reached a point where they were, they were not now allowing me to take the attempts yeah. because it would cost us. We have to fight for the rebound or else uh, if it's not for the rebound, uh, they have to now fight like to make sure they get the ball back to someone on the top. Like at least we get continue having the possession of the ball. Yeah. So believe in your skill and your potential to be a good player because I know there were times when I didn't think I could do it and I wanted to give up but then my dad you know he was there he pushed me he would wake me up for training in the morning when the last day before I had you know things shots weren't dropping you know you just need to have and you need to have that self-drive but you also need to have support so look, seek for support from your parents. Don't don't be shy to bring up the idea of, you know, can I go for training today? Or maybe can I get a basketball and be dribbling? Because mm. you need to be able to not make excuses for yourself. That's a, a thing that a lot of people subconsciously do. They're like, well, I can't go to, I don't have a coat at home, so I can't do anything. But you can get a basketball and work. Yeah. <laughs> to the Slam Dunk Basketball Talk on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel Aten. Remember, you can catch us live on our socials, HTV1, on our Twitter. You can go to our website, houseoftalentuganda.com. You can go to our YouTube, House of Talent Uganda live stream, or just go up to our Facebook, catch this show live, share it far and wide. If you know there is someone who needs to be watching this show, especially for the ladies, and I know the guys out there. Oh, um, what are they called? Uh, Sub. Subs. I'm yeah. forgetting the word subs. <laughs> Very simple subbing. Yeah. So when when she was on court and I was out, I would tell her, Are you okay? Esther, are you okay? Do you need to sit down? You got this, you know. But you're the coach because there is no coach. Yeah. So every time I was on the bench, because mainly it was her and I switching out, I would make sure I'm talking out to her because I know her mind is now frustrated. Yeah. So I'm going to be her guide and her eyes. I'm telling her, move like this. They're bringing a screen. I'm being her eyes off the court. Yeah. So um, uh, away from three on three, what I usually do is I wait for maybe a break or um, when the ball goes out and I talk to my teammate and try to reassure them because that's what I need right now. I need for yeah. their minds to be on this court. Yeah. And maybe I can tell them, try to do this, try to do this, try to do something else. I try to avail for them yeah. and I try to not put them in trouble. So many times when you get stranded... Between the players, that is one thing. We were connecting off and on court. Like if it was anything, um, we would before training you we communicate to each other are you coming for training are you coming for training that yeah. is one thing where is new what where how 
about everyone. Like, yeah. where are you? What are you doing? We never walked alone, even for the games. Yeah. We were together the whole time. If it was to watch a certain team, be like, guys, let's watch this game. And then everyone, everyone was given room to speak. I don't know. I was not as the captain, but I, I didn't dominate. Yeah. I made everyone feel like this is a very free world. Like, please yeah. say whatever you feel like, and it helped us a lot. Like yeah. the friendship. We are friends. That, that was like the biggest thing. First of all, from the very beginning, we were friends. Yeah. So it helped us even. And I just couldn't also show up for training. So many times I would show up late. Uh, maybe I'm missing, uh, I'm missing something at school to show up. Or I'm doing something at school and missing training. Yeah. And it was showing on the court. And I do not like to do things um, half-heartedly. So yeah. I decided to take a break until I can regather myself and be able to do uh, both of them without losing any of them. Yeah. But how I try to balance, people have always asked me this. Number one, it's grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I'm like, God, I need to go through this day and I need to do all mm -hmm. these things. But it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah. The things my friends are going to do, but I'll never do them because I don't have time to do it. Uh, so you have to have discipline, prioritize, know what you have to do at what time, have a timetable and follow it. Yeah. No procrastination. <laughs> I do not get to lay around. My parents are very supportive. Yeah. They are very, very supportive. I actually thank God for that. Because we have uh, had fellow teammates where they have to hide, like yeah. you've said, <laughs> hide or facilitate themselves for anything and in everything about basketball. Yeah. But my parents are very supportive. When it came to the time of, I think I'll make it on team, what, what, what. The passports, they made sure I get it on time yeah. before even anything, before it was even confirmed. The COVID, they made sure I had the shots like on time. Yeah. If it is the shoes that I need, I'm not going to hustle. They're going to give me that money. <laughs> and I buy the shoes. Basically, even if I say I have training tomorrow, yeah. at this time, they'll give me the transport and everything. They're very supportive. That yeah. is. Uh -huh. Diversifying everything. Because when I was in Miss Uganda, my theme was creating a multi talented youth. And I believe maybe I'll do it through sports and all these other co-curricular activities that are there to do uh, in addition to I just held my ball and recited my poem as I was doing a bit of dribbling. Then at the end, I put the, the microphone down and I did a bit of dribbling. I yeah. almost lost the ball. <laughs> But it was such a beautiful experience and they were shocked. People kept asking me, you play basketball? Tell me about basketball. And I felt like at some point it helped me uh, put basketball out there for the world and maybe other people. So, yeah. Interesting. I, I, I remember seeing that video and as a coach, I was just praying, don't lose the ball, don't <laughs> lose the ball. <laughs> right? I was thinking, okay, I'm doing this, but I can't just do the front dribble. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try the between the legs, behind the back. So. And, um, yeah, like you said, let's break it down, rebuild it. Yeah, but in, 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 in my view, it's not about just taking out the carpet so that you can sweep the the, the, the dust there. Yeah. Uh, we, we shouldn't actually pick a leaf from the river. Should we should take, pick a, a tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we should take the entire tree with its roots. Yes. <laughs> Emmanuel Latang and in the studio Esther and Bronny for those of you who are waiting for that secret well the cuts out of the bag Bronny was in fact it, it, not everyone can win yeah. so I was yeah. I was just really proud of how much I've done and how much I had learned and how much the experience had impacted on me and I was so happy for the winner because she was my roommate yeah. and as long as the three of us got it we'd all got it yeah. so yeah I was I was I was really proud of myself yeah well, congrats again. You know. Thank you. Hopefully, you'll run, you know, for another <laughs> when it comes, <laughs> when it comes Not a chance. Yeah, not a chance? No. All right. Maybe we'll pass it over to Esther. You Maybe know, we'll pass it over to Esther. Esther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking about that, um, Esther, away from basketball mm -hmm. and away from psychology, okay? 
what are some of those things that you do as as Esther? You know, we never know. You might be a Rihanna in the making, or you know, Anna Zawa <laughs> like in the Riri. making. You know. <laughs> <Riri>. <laughs> so, what do you do outside basketball in school? Mm, first and foremost, I'm uh, the grace of God, because you cannot just stand and say, "I'm not going for this." Trust me, by your own power, strength, yeah. you can't, because it is fun. When you look at it, it is really fun. Yeah. You want to try it, but then you remember, um, okay to talk something at something small uh, there, there is this teaching there is make a church it's about your relationship with God it is one of the biggest things so you realize it is going to take you back from where you have been and you're going to know that you have actually set a foot back or set so many steps back yeah. so you know how much it is taking you back and how much you're going to go through going back so that you can reach where you have been or even pass it yeah. so it is basically God also like you have to pray so much you ask God for the strength because not everyone can do it yeah. otherwise if you just chill you may just find yourself <laughs> that side <laughs> everyone just looking at you as for my dad who is a pastor like he will tell you he will tell you I'm not going to come looking for you around clubs what what even if I hear that you were there or something i'm not going to come looking for you yeah. you know the right thing to do so that is the first thing i'd be like oh god my dad like my dad knows i know the right thing to do so how yeah. is he going to hear <laughs> me that i did this so i just decide to yeah. accept what is happening what i am and yeah. then do the other side of it like the right thing yeah yeah basically that is it otherwise you cannot just do it by your by yourself, oh, by yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah interesting right. um there's a lot of things that go into basketball mm -hmm. okay obviously Bronny, you mentioned one earlier discipline okay and i believe that to handle such a situation one yes you need god but you also need to be disciplined yeah okay true. god will create for you situations where you need to be disciplined he won't give you the discipline <laughs> yeah okay um Bronny, what are some of those other elements that you have learned yeah, it's <laughs> right over there. <laughs> so it helps you know the 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 spotlight, how to handle it yeah. when it comes. However small the spotlight is, when it comes, it's a spotlight in mm -hmm. whatever perspective of your life it is. Yeah. Um, then basketball has taught me to be um, to persevere. Life is not easy. When we left Form 6, they were telling us, hey, when you leave high school, things are going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <Probably> lie. <laughs> accident <laughs> adulthood is a lie there is so much you have to do there is so much you have to show up for there is so like so many people are looking at you and expecting a lot from you yeah. so all that if you cannot persevere if you cannot be get all those things from basketball from sports from whatever line of your life it is and just fix them in also your normal don't look like you do yeah. can you even push some okay can you really stand your ground can yeah. you like it is uh, the stereotyping is there, yeah. but that alone cannot stop the women from playing. So I urge guys, like the girls, please like continue playing. Whichever stereotype may be there, yeah. it is for us to like hit and go through that glass ceiling, whatever that is, so that we can be better. And then maybe the other thing, like she said, the brain drain in athletes. Most of the times, uh, I for one, if I got a very good opportunity to go abroad for basketball, <laughs> I would surely and also pack my bag <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I feel like um, there is so much more that you get from outside yeah. than what you're going to gain in from here, uh, right from that training. Like, I don't know, there, is, there are so many... ...dominated mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Now, how do we get the women up there when it comes to basketball? Because I, I believe that you guys are looked down upon, yeah. okay? Just like you say it when someone looks at you and is like, oh, you also play basketball, okay? Yet when you look at uh, the international scene, okay? Look at the WNBA, look at basketball in Europe, okay? It, 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 it's, it's a situation whereby the ladies might not be that up there, but mm -hmm. they're somewhere, they're somewhere, okay? Yeah. And in Uganda, we need to get ladies to that point, okay? So what can we do to develop women's sports in relation to basketball in Uganda? Number one, before I talk about the we, I need to talk about the I. Yeah. As women, what are you doing 
you know, uh, when we look at the, at the world in general, we've been fighting right from the one get go. Right? Yeah. Like a girl has to stay home. Number one, what are we as women doing? Number two, when we go to the big level, uh, we need more women reinstated in like big places. For example, we need more female umpires. We need more female coaches. That only if you ask me to state a female coach, yeah. in my mind, I know one person. Coach Mavita Ali. Yeah. That's it. She's the only lady I know and have seen ever since I was a little girl playing basketball. Yeah. She's the only lady I know that maybe there are others, but she's the one that I've actively seen do something for the women through yeah. um, what she was doing with the uh, score beyond. I know there is angels doing something. The different teams are doing things. Yeah. There are grassroots programs. What are we doing to bear the girls? Girls do have challenges, so yeah, as much as we preach equality and equity, girls are going to us and be like, you play so well, you should come play for my team when you finish. Which class are you senior to? Okay. Then all the old senior six, you'll never see him, you'll even forget his name. Yeah. You'll see him again if you get a chance to play. Yeah. So what are you doing to monitor that child that is continuing? Yeah. Boys are always looking for things, you know, playing playing the three-on-three -three street basketball, looking yeah. for the coach. But girls have a way they are set back and they need to be to be let. They should know, they, they should let them know that if you actually show up and just let us know that we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah so they need to create a platform for them to know that they are welcome. Yeah. And that starts with a top. There is no I'm going to show up if I'm not seeing a female national team that is moving. Yeah. If I'm not seeing a national team select that is on the side training and playing. Then with time, they can also like recommend whoever facilitates them yeah. to like partially have his thoughts somewhere on the other on the women's team so that yeah. like, like they can all go Stand about like solidarity. together yeah in solidarity. Yeah. I think that that can work. I don't know I don't think it's something big. It can yeah. start with support and then financially with time yeah i'd actually love to see you know a structure like that <laughs> oh, yeah I, I would give an example in my yeah. school there is a time they were not going to take the girls and the boys stood and said if the girls are not going, not going. we are not going <laughs> they had to get the money so that was a good thing that the boys did for yeah. the girls so yeah, yeah just kind to of solidarity yeah. That. yeah all right so your final thoughts Bronny there's a girl out there watching you know what would you tell such a girl yeah, uh, it is never too late to start anything that is for sure uh, you can start on anything and everything at any time it is not yet like time is not lost you can do it yeah. um, put God first like Bronny said put God first Number two, me, I have a mentor, she's called Letitia, the one of KCCA, like she will call me to ask me, did you train? Like get that one person that is going to do that for you. And I thank yeah. God for her. Yeah, get that one person that is going to do that for you. It can be your coach. It can be someone that has played the game. Yeah. Okay. Bronnie is here and she's willing to do that for you. Please yeah. reach out <laughs> to her. <laughs> yeah. Basically, that is it. And also trusting yourself. It starts with you. If you feel like you can't do it, even when you try it, it's not going to move. Yeah. But when you feel like you can do it, with God helping you and having a mentor by your side and all that, you can surely make it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. ladies, thank you very much for coming thank through to you. the show. Not make excuses for yourself. That's a thing that a lot of people subconsciously do. They're like, well, I can't go to, I don't have a court at home, so I can't do anything. But you can get a basketball and learn to dribble, you know. Then when you actually are able to access a court, you have you have a starting point you know and also to you know just mm. if you love something give it your all mm -hmm. because i know there was a time when i played basketball but i didn't i didn't love it so i just i was just you know going with the flow not mm. really i didn't have any sense of direction i didn't have any goal mm -hmm. but when i started setting goals for myself and actively trying to reach them that's when i actually started seeing results like with the national mm -hmm. team I set that as a goal and you know it paid off when I got to play and also the Kenya camp because the second I came back from Cairo you know it's a CEO bench so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that so I will <laughs> I will change the script this time around um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler if I'm looking to know who you are are you Ugandan if yes what are the values that define you as Ugandan <sighs> 
that's the easiest question I think to answer. I am a Tipilo Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agueng. Yeah. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior, and when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene, yeah. where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. Uh, so I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, uh, the love for debates and, 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 and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I think it is something uh, I personally either way. We do have, we, we do take in students, they learn, especially through the lockdown, we've had a, a lot of them coming in and to take on the skill. But we always give them one or two days in a month mm -hmm. where they come into the selling desk and they get to see what it means to actually do the sale. You don't have to be on, on, on the planer all the time, on the circular saw. You need to know that after the circular saw, this customer doesn't know it exists. Yeah. How do you inform them that it is the step that is going forward on their object? And then we've open, kind of opened up the, 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 industrial, the industrial part of, of park carpentry mm. to, the, to, to, the, to the customers. They're actually very thrilled when they see how yeah. these things are done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have to take them, them in. Mm. Like, what is a barista? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, a barista is a specialist. Uh, that makes coffee, yeah. a person who makes coffee yeah. for people to, you know, coffee like, you know, cappuccino, different kinds of, you know, yeah. coffees and people who are like very they green. Yeah, no. <laughs> I say this is a big hotel. I expected to find here a coffee machine yeah. and nobody knows about it. Yeah. So it's, I think, um, incumbent of us to really transform uh, this entire community, the, the entire country to, you know, coffee, to learn about coffee yeah. and also to, you know, uh, give them uh, the, the, the advantages of coffee, teach them about coffee and then later on they maybe come consume it, yeah. you know, uh, rather than just... Like I said, we need to also be vigilant yeah. because the government will not be able to understand which new VPN client has come up, yeah, or which new VPN solution has come up, probably uh, because they will not know. Yeah. But for you, go ahead and download it and install it on your device. And then you try transacting. You actually go to, then you say, oh, I've stolen money from my account. Oh, my information was stolen. Oh, I see nodes <laughs> on, on social media. People yeah. steal nodes from people's devices and actually they ask for a pay. Yeah. Someone says, if you don't give me $100,000, I'm going to publish your nonsense yeah. on the cyberspace. You know? So people need to be vigilant. But of course, the government is also doing something. Good afternoon, my name is Felix Eopal and it is Slam Dunk Basketball Talk, the show where we discuss everything about basketball, what is happening, what is not happening, what we predict 
is going to happen and this afternoon we have graced with the appearance of Frederick Freedom Wara. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for grace. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we even had a friendly. You had a friendly? Uh -huh. Which team did you have a friendly with? With Bugema University. Bugema University. Yes. How did yes. that go? Uh, it, was a, it was a friendly game. You know, you can't come and beat us at home ground. At home ground. Most people don't know about uh, the JKL Arena. Please enlighten our viewers out there. We are live on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on our website house of talent uganda ug our jkl arena is in mukono it is on katosi road uh, a place called namaiba mm -hmm. so as you reach the trading center of namaiba on mm -hmm. your left hand you see the sign post of jkl dolphin sports arena the, 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 this investment how much did it cost the JKL organization and how were the funds able to be uh, collected because that's some, something that the viewers out there would love to know and because I believe various teams would also want to have such a, a place. I think the arena we are in phase one okay we are just mm -hmm. on phase one of the, the project you know we are running a program Okay. And uh, I think now we are in year seven mm. of the program, but two years have been eaten away by COVID. Mm. So we are like two years behind. So we've invested, uh, we started the program around 2013. 2013. Okay. That is when before we started the team. Because okay. uh, uh, I, I believe when you look at the records, uh, JKL was not yet in existence. They should oh, either they player stops playing basketball, at least they have a job. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they should have something to do. Either they are working within the organization, uh, they, they, are, they are coaching, okay? Uh, they, or they can set up their own work. Because if you look at what we do, especially with now with the academies, mm -hmm. uh, we, have, we, we have a session when we, do the, when we are training the kids, we have a session for life skills, okay? Oh. So for life skills. So we ask them what they want to be in future, okay? What their plans are, uh, oh, we talk you, to you, them. You, you, you develop them so that they can be self sufficient. Yes. Is that, oh, that is okay. actually that is very brilliant stuff mm. for uh, Ugandan basketball and for Uga uh, so many athletes, not just for uh, the game of basketball. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, how um, far those discussions no, with them? No, they're already on board for 2022. They're already on we board. Have, we, we, like I told you, like we already sold to them the plan for 2022. The plan for 2022 is after COVID. We are doing. We are doing a cut. Okay. Oh, yeah. so we what, what, what you're saying is um, um, ahead of the 2022 season, you're going to have some players uh, uh, re uh, cut off the team. No, we are cutting the costs. Yeah, or yeah. operational costs. Operational costs. Oh, okay. And how are you doing that exactly? Uh, we are cutting operational costs. Yeah. Let's just assume we are you are earning a thousand dollars. Okay. We, we, we met with some of the players and told them, okay, you know, this is COVID time, so we are realigning with the company overall objective of the club. Mm -hmm. So if you can take a 20% pay cut mm -hmm. to build so that we are able to participate in bar, uh, we, are able, we want to cut our expenditures slightly, mm -hmm. okay, uh, trying with the current market. Uh, number two, or number three is in. Um, we are going to recruit players that fit our profile. What is that profile exactly? What is the JKL profile? Um, uh, our, our team is built, is, is built on um, first skill, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, then we have, uh, when we recruit players, uh, there's not everybody fits the, the system. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those who love the club, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, come to you and I say, Felix, Oh, some players come and call me like, you know what, we want to come to JKL. So mm -hmm. like, what are you expecting uh, for, the, for the boys team? Mm -hmm. For the girls, I can tell you... The, the, uh, uh, JKL Lady oh. Dolphin uh, uh, has been amazing. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know how, if the trend is going to continue going on. Uh, it is two years with, without players actively playing. So mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to 
assess their fitness levels now. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a club, a winning club, you know, we won like for two years, we're going to the third, you, fourth. You, 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 um, you won, uh, uh, JKL Lady, uh, Lady Dolphins won back to back. Yeah, so mm. originally the plan was normally, if it's a, any successful team, you can win four times with the same team. Well, uh, okay. uh, City World uh, has been doing it for seven years. So many things that take place behind the scenes that, okay, okay. so which f facilitates them to join the senior team, okay, at earliest opportunity. We have a special program for the younger players. Because okay. um, uh, most of the fans, or even when you go to the comments and everything, they're like, when is JKL winning a title? Is this their year or not? We have already won a title. Which title? The men's team. Oh, the men's team. Yeah, that is. Uh, I think last year we had a chance. Uh, uh, those are the, uh, 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 <laughs> the comments. Even when um, uh, uh, we, we, I posted mm. and uh, I, I, I mentioned to our viewers, our fans, that you would be the, our guest today, mm. they were asking. Can Maybe City Oil. I think you understand. Mm. It's difficult to get a player from them. Oh, it's difficult to go to uh, APA, what, this uh, patrol is in run. It's difficult, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to get a player from there. So we were looking, uh, the scouts sent some videos, mm -hmm. but uh, as a TD, I don't believe in videos. Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, you believe in first looking at the player and uh, yes. assessing them yes. yourself. So I was supposed to travel, there was a mm -hmm. player we were targeting in Zambia, Mm. And they told us there was a big man who was supposed to fly there mm. uh, to, 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 to identify the player. And then uh, things came around. Uh, mm -hmm. I was supposed to travel to Nairobi to check on some players. And, and that, 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 that expense. <laughs>
no barista joined the uh, coffee industry without like having an inspiration from someone, but mm. they just go direct from somewhere. What I'm trying to say is that no one has come on the show and said, I went to that coffee industry or to be a barista like because I did. wanted it. Yeah. So even your story is the same, like you started as a cleaner, or then <clears throat> Calvin was here and then he told you, can you compete me or can you outgrow me? Yeah, in fact, like, he said, I think you'll be a good barista. Yeah. yeah. So he decided to pave me in the same direction. And uh, he's the man actually behind my my story. Speaking about yeah. uh, a man behind your story, you know, when I'm here with Saddam, yeah. uh, you guys don't know the story behind uh, me becoming a barrister. Okay. Guys, I love to introduce you the guy. So in uh, coffee extraction, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. So you need a scale mm -hmm. to measure the amount of coffee you're putting in. That's dozing, yeah? Yeah, dozing. Yeah, then uh, you need also a timer. Uh -huh. You have to calculate. You and this is on a time. professional part of... Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, let me first go back uh, years before. Mm -hmm. Here in Uganda, we don't have these sets. Just wake up in the morning, start the machine, mm. grinder, pull coffee, ta 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 ta. You don't know what you're doing, mm. you tap, then you go. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge came my first day in UAE. Mm. Ah, it was a challenge. We're getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> you're I'm skipping your part. <laughs> All right, then let's go first. <laughs> the topic. Yeah. Uh, so, you need the skill, as I told you. Mm -hmm. uh, you need the timer, mm. then you're good to go. Scale, timer, yeah. And you're good to go. All. Yeah, it's about so foundation. Since yeah. we're talking about the espresso machine. Yeah. So how do I get that good espresso cup? All right. Uh, after having those what I've told you, mm -hmm. then you have to, to grind your coffee. Mm. You put on the scale, mm. you tear. But uh, you need to start with some uh, amount of coffee you're dosing. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are dealing with speciality. So you need at least to start from uh, a higher dose of 20. It's not very high, but mm. it's normal. Yeah. 20, you do with 20. Then uh, you have to know the energy you're putting on there. Because uh, be before you extract, you need to lock some parameters. Mm. So if you say you're using a dose of 20, mm -hmm. it should be 20. Mm -hmm. I told you guys we're having the art of making coffee right here. And Saddam is here giving us the needs and gritties mm. of making a good cup of coffee. Saddam, yeah. let's talk about uh, <coughs> baristas in Uganda. What do you think that Ugandan baristas are lacking? Because I'm sure you've gone through various stations, on, uh -huh. on, on especially in Uganda. What do you think that they're lacking to be good baristas? I think they are not lacking, but the industry is not supporting them. Have they done what's enough to have uh, an effect on the industry or to have pressure from the industry to support them? That question goes back to you now. You're on the <laughs> ground. I'm on the ground, but <laughs> you're on the ground. <laughs> but <coughs> uh, blame you, right? Then you're a bad barista. Yeah, bad barista. Mm. In fact, you're a coffee maker, not a barista. Ah, we call them coffee wait. makers. What's the difference between a barista and a coffee maker? A barista is someone who is professionally, uh, how can I say, he's professional in doing whatever he's doing. So he will, he will love a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So you give it 100% of his shot. Yeah. But the coffee maker, just get coffee. And make. Drink. And serve it. He doesn't care. So a coffee maker doesn't have that caring part. Mm -hmm. But a barista, mm -hmm. you have the passion. So I think you have the point now. Well, guys, I think you get to know now what's the difference between a barista and a coffee maker. So let us know on the show you've watched all the episodes of The Coffee Break. We're going to be brewing our coffee and Saddam will be giving us all the details on how best we can brew this coffee. So don't you go away. We shall be right back. Coffee industry is very wide, it's very big, it's very full of opportunities. Don't sit there and say, I have nothing to do. You can join the industry, you can get whatever you want. If you give it time, invest in it. By giving it time, 
Don't look for money. Don't look for big salary at first. First learn. Mula yula, lise mulembe. Mulembe, mulembe, mako ha, mala. Okay. But I'm not a mugiso. So I'm in Uganda by ba. Hmm. I'm just a dam. We're not mugiye vali mo na mo na batula ba. Yeah. So, uh, I grew up in Entebbe. Yeah, I was raised by a single mother, and uh, at the age of around ten, I crossed to Mbali. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to stay with my grandmother after the death of our father. So the two parents, I know two actually. My mother and then my grandfather. I uh, saw my grandmother. They're the one who raised me. So I joined the, uh, my senior one. In, uh, there is a school, it's called uh, Manafa, Manafa High. It's in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The middle of the city of Mbale. The middle of, yeah. <laughs> so you're the pioneer, the celeb in Mbale. Because no, it's in the city. Uh, no, I'm a quiet guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was a celeb, but uh, I had my little profile around, yeah. yeah. So uh, I didn't go, I, I didn't do higher education. So mm -hmm. I ended in senior four. I tried to go to senior five, but you know, school fees issues. Mm. So I had to branch somewhere. Let, let's let's talk about yeah. you going to Mbale at the age of ten. Mm. Uh, what were they growing coffee like your grandma and ma and mother? Were they growing coffee uh, because Mbale is known also for growing coffee that side? Ah uh, no, actually no, mm. we didn't. Yeah. So at the age of ten, fifteen, you never knew about coffee. Yeah, no, I knew about coffee. That's okay. coffee, but I didn't. Mm. I didn't care what's coffee. Mm. For me, I'm a, uh, before I was a, a tea drinker. Okay. Every day, even if there is no sugar in the tea, yeah. I'll take it because I love tea. Okay. Understand? Mm. So at the age of uh, uh, 20. Mm. After senior four. Yes, yeah, after senior four. Mm. I started to, to look around what I can do. Yeah. So uh, in my vacation of senior four, I first went to there is a place there in Kampala. They do furniture, you know. Mm. It's called, uh, it's in Wais actually. So I, I started to gamble around for three months, but I knew there was no future here. You, don't, so you, you didn't feel that thing? I didn't feel the vibe. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I <laughs> no, not cheetah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Not cheetah. Can yeah. be. So I went back to Mbali. I was stuck somewhere, you know. I was in the middle. I didn't know what to do. Mm. Yeah, I sleep from morning until evening, waking up, looking for what to do, nothing. Then there was this lady, uh, she's a friend of uh, um, Madame Gloria, mm. she's called, uh, uh, I forgot, ten. Maggie. Maggie. Yeah, Mrs. Maggie. Maggie is, uh, Gloria is the CEO of Endero, so they are friends. Eh? Yeah, they are friends. Mm. Uh, Maggie, she's <coughs> working with Jenga Projects in Mbale, mm. she's the vice president there. Mm. So she was my neighbor. So one day she came to me like Saddam, and the year is ending. We have to plan for the next year. What's your plan? So like, what do you, what, wait, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Do I have to have a plan for the next year? Mm -hmm. I asked her. So she told me, yes, you're a man, you have to think ahead. So I told him, but I don't have a job. Like, do you want to work? Like, yes, anything, anything. Do for me a CV. So here was a, another drama. I didn't know how to do a CV. <laughs> I'm being honest. In a CV, my So <clears throat> she told me, you have to. I'll, I'll not help you. I'm like, okay, so I went to Google. I did some little research. I did one. I gave her. You wrote a CV. Yes. Okay. So uh, the following morning, she told me, I read for the interview. Like, I, do I have one? 
Like yes, so I ask her in the interview what they ask. Yeah. Like you go and figure it out, your man. Like okay. Wait, yes. So yeah, wait, yes. <laughs> At that moment I knew na ino kwe rom sajja. Singe ya wa gisumba kusala mbalu. Ah ah no. Yeah. It was another topic of yeah. life, you yeah. know. So I went, uh, Madame Gloria, she invited me over, so uh, okay. she sat me Wait, down. how do you get, okay, man in your Gloria, but yeah. how do you, okay, when you wrote the CV, you sent it to Gloria? No, 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 yeah. to Madame Maggie. To Aggie? Maggie, Maggie. Maggie. Yeah, mm -hmm. so she gave it to, to Madame Gloria. Ah. So they called me over for the interview. Mm. Uh, by then, the, there were three, two, three people, let me say Madame Gloria. Then uh, there was this white lady, by then she was a manager in Enduro Mbali. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, there was also another lady, she was called Madame Penina. Mm -hmm. All of these two, I think they left, uh, the, the white lady, then Madame Penina. So, yeah. What was the reaction when you got a call? Because you had suffered from uh, going to the furniture store, 